Hey guys, I'm Michael right here with Unfiltered Gamer, and today we're doing an interview at Origins Game Fair, mm -hmm. Columbus, Ohio, 2019, and I'm here with Phil Shod uh, with White Toe Games with the game Cheese Quest, the quest for cheese. He's got a couple other games in the works too, and let's go ahead and have an informal interview. Tell us what about Cheese Quest, the quest for cheese you want to talk about, and if you want to talk about anything else as well, we can do that as well. Sure. Uh, so Cheese Quest is doing incredibly well, which I'm very happy about. A lot of support from everybody, which has been great, um, especially this crew here, uh, here at Origins and this guy. I mean, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but uh, toot toot. Okay. Um, but the game is a, uh, obviously the theme of the game is family friendly, um, but the game can be, uh, it has different levels of strategy, so you can play it. Um, I'll tell you, the best thing I heard uh, for, as uh, feedback for the game was, I love this game because I can play it with my kids, and they love it, and I love it. I can play it with my adult friends, they love it, and I love it. Or I can give it to my kids, and they leave me alone for a little while, and I love it. So that's awesome. Um, it was great feedback. Did you just plan that one out, or did you just on the fly do that one? That was uh, totally on the fly. Wow. All right, I, I am impressed then. <laughs> I, I, we played this live actually, Cheese Quest, The Quest for Cheese, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, it's a lot of fun. Basically, you have a mouse, and you've got a bunch of cats, and you're trying to get all the cheese you can and bring it to the middle of the board, and if you get enough cheese before anybody else, you win the game. Very, very simple as to how it works, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of strategy cards, a lot of strategy after you play those cards. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go, whether you go through walls and all that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed Que Cheese Quest, even though it's a crazy, crazy name. Yeah. What made you decide on that name? Um, so, originally, it was a completely different theme altogether, and and then um, we ended up changing the theme of uh, my wife's idea, which uh, we ended up going with. And then, which is always the correct call. It's always the right thing to do. Um, and then I just, one day I was like, I don't know what I want to call it. I was like, Cheese Wars. I was all of these weird names. And then I was like, you know what? Let's do Cheese Quest, the quest for cheese. It was just something that just came out of my I mouth. love it. And my one buddy was sitting next to me. He's like, it's that's so the memorable. name of your game. It's so memorable, yeah, though. It yeah, is, yeah. yeah. I love the, uh, a lot of pe people on BGG just post like, oh, I love how it's repeating itself. I, don't, I think they're sarcastically loving it, but, you know, I like the name. That's okay, because they'll remember it. Yes. Right? Exactly. Um, so you can go ahead and pick this up basically on Walmart.com Walmart. and Amazon. And, and Uncommon Goods. Uh, yeah. And if you, if you buy it from Amazon during Origins, um, you can use the promo code ORIGINS2019, all caps, and you'll get a 10% off. If this were live, maybe that would work, but yeah, I ain't yeah. going to finish this oh, until next week, so sorry, no Origins code for oh, you yeah. guys. That's not very bright of me. That's okay, though. You can go ahead Sometimes and try. I get a good one. Maybe, you, maybe you'll go in there, and then uh, you know, you put the code in, and you'll still just buy it for full price, because it's such a dang good maybe game. I, if you, I'll leave it up until he posts the video, until okay. a week after you post the video. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I'll let you know then. I'll okay. You, know. you guys are lucky then. You guys are lucky. You want to talk about anything else you want to talk about? Um, I got some other games coming up. I'm not going to talk too much about them yet. Um, Secret. Yeah, still trying to work out the kinks. Um, but, I mean, mostly just a thank you to everybody who's been supportive. It's been awesome. And if you if you want to try the game out, um, please do. Thanks. Yeah. Once, give me one theme of one of them. A little bit. A um, little something, something. So one of the games is, uh, I'll give you both themes, because okay. that's what I love. Um, but the, the first one is a financial literacy game. Um, so the theme of it is to teach, it's basically a theme that goes over like different things, different tasks and skills you learn to be a better, m better with money. Um, it's meant for kids, so yeah. So that's that one. And then there's another one that is more uh, Dungeons Dragons kind of style. I know there's a lot of games out there like that, but I've always I, I'm a big fan of that genre. So it's going to be a game where you're like, it's a dice building deck game where you're basically building up a hand of dice, and uh, those dice are classes, and you build up a group and go dungeon crawling. Ooh, that sounds. I like that one. The other one I want to see. I want to see what that's like. You know, send me some copies. Let me check it out. Of yeah. course. All right, I of like course. that. Thank you so much, Phil, for taking the time to come out with us in Gen Con. I know you guys had some fun with True Dungeon, which I'll probably post that in the same video here so you can see what he was doing uh, during what was supposed to be our interview so you get an idea of why, why it's... Did you have fun with that, by the way? It was really fun, actually. I really you appreciate it. any loot? Uh, I did. I got three red items, which apparently is good. I've never done it before, so my friend was like, let's do it, and bought tickets. It was like two hours, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really long. So you got a whole, I mean, that's probably yeah. a good deal then for yeah. you yeah. Get enough time. Then. Yeah, but then I looked down and I was like, oh crap, I'm supposed to meet. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> I forgive you. Well, thanks so much, man. Thank I really you. appreciate meeting Thank you for once. I and appreciate and after, you. after all this time, good looking gentlemen, right? All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to, you know what I do at the end here?
Have you seen in the videos? Which one? See you guys next time. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Origins Game Fair interview. I'm Callie Wright here with T from Haba Games. Hi T. Hello. How's it going here at Origins? Fantastic. Uh, we've had a great day so far. It's day two and my voice is almost gone. Of course, that happens to all of us, I think, here. Just so much to talk and share about, right? Lots of faces to meet. Yes, yes, and thank goodness for the microphone. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, so what are you, I know you have a ton of games here at the Haba booth, but what are you most excited to share or uh, tell us about? Well, so we have three new releases that are debuting here at the show, and so we're really excited about this one, Unicorn Glitterluck Cloud Psych Stacking. Uh, those of you who know the Haba line probably are familiar with this brand. Uh, Unicorn Glitterluck is a IP out of Germany. It's very, very popular here as well. Uh, but in this game, you're working together to stack the cloud crystals to get the unicorns and the cloud crystals all into the cloud kingdom before the rain comes. So you're all working together. It's manual dexterity. It's a little bit like Animal Upon Animal, if you know Animal Upon Animal from Hava, uh, but co-op in the awesome. Unicorn Glitterluck world. And what ages is that for? So this one is four and up, and it's one to four players, so they can play independently or with people, so it's always fantastic. And it takes about 15, maybe 20 minutes if you're really, really good, or having bad luck, one of the two. Awesome, so fun to play as a family or to set as an activity for the child alone. Awesome. Yeah, oh yeah, lots of versatility and we have a lot of games that work with independent play for kids and we want to encourage them to play on their own in addition with parents and the games, we want them to be exciting and not so boring for parents as well and I think this hits the mark. Yes, for sure. I love the animals on animal stacking, so I'm uh, super curious about this one. All right, what's next? <laughs> Oh, I saw this game. Okay. So this is Snail Sprint. So this is a racing game, but you don't have one single snail that is like your snail. Instead, you there's a card. There's a deck of cards. They get dealt to you out. You have one card. It shows you three snails that you care about and that you're cheering for. And at the end of the game, you will only score points for the three snails on your card that actually finish the race. So during the game, you want to keep it secret what snails you're going for as you move different snails up the garden path, up and over the box, because they're snails. they got to go over the box. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. so we'll show the side there. Yeah, the side of the box, which is actually part of the board, which is really cool. Yeah, so the board is the, board is the box at yeah. some point, and the snails are magnetic. That's the magic. The secret's out. <laughs> um, so the snails, when they finish and they place, whoever, uh, once we reveal all our cards, whoever gets the most points, because the snails they were rooting for placed in the podium, whoever has that most wins. So that's awesome. Snail Sprint. It's got some color and shape matching as well, right? Yes. So if the you're working on shapes, you can work on shapes. If you're working on colors, you can work on colors with the kiddos. If you're playing with somebody who is colorblind, they can use the shapes of ref as references instead of colors, that kind of stuff. So it's for two to four players. It's ages five and up. And it takes about 15, 20 minutes as well, depending on you know player count and roll of the dice. So yeah, that's Snail Sprint. Awesome. Thank you for sharing Snail Sprint. And then, what's the last title you're super excited to share about? This is Hanga. <laughs> so Hanga. Oh, you know what? I want to. I want to be a professional, but we have a toddler that wants to play with our toddler game. So we're just gonna oh, let yeah, him in there. Play. Go for it. Go for it. Go for we're it. moving. Go we're play. moving. Yeah. Lo very busy here at the Haba booth. I was using the kids' table as my prop. <laughs> um, so Hanga is our new family game, part of our game night line. This is a lightweight Euro strategy game. And so this is not what people think when they think of Haba, right? Like there's no yellow, I mean there's yellow, we got a giant yellow cat on the front. But, so this is a resource management point allocation game and there's a lot going on. You're gonna gather resources, you're gonna use those to complete contracts to get points. You're also going to compete and trying to get uh, to the chieftain totem first and you're gonna be trying to have majority on mammoths to get extra points and allocations. There's a lot going on in this game that you can do and the best part is there's a cat 
Uh, Honga, the saber-toothed tiger, is the neighborhood saber-toothed tiger, and if you don't pay attention to him on your turn, he will come and bug you and steal your resources. No, Honga, no. <laughs> He's so cute, but so angry. So uh, what yeah. ages is this for then? So this is for eight and up. So our game line, we started at eight and up. And the idea is you've been playing hobby games for a while. You got a seven-year-old, eight-year-old. You're ready to start moving them up into games with real depth and strategy. That's where this comes in. It's two to five players, and it takes anywhere from 45 minutes to 60 minutes. Awesome. Thank you for sharing about hobby games. If someone is super interested, wants to uh, find out more or buy some of the games, where can they go? So you can always go to your friendly local game store to visit for Haba Games or HabaUSA.com. We have all of our line and free shipping on orders over $40. That's awesome. What a great deal. Thank you so much, T, for sharing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair. I'm Callie Wright, and I'm here with Price from us. Cephalo Fair Games. <laughs> Cephalo Fair Games, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I had a hard time pronouncing that earlier. All right. So, Price, how's the Origins going? It's good. It's our first year, so we're having a really good time out here. Awesome. Well, welcome to Origins, our first year here, too. Very much a lot of fun. Uh, I see you guys dem doing a lot of demos of Gloomhaven. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we've got Gloomhaven here, and we've got uh, Forgotten Circles as well, the new expansion. So we've got some of the new enemies, some of the new character class, all that going on for people to check out. So Awesome. And so what all do you get in the new expansion? Sure. So uh, Forgotten Circles was uh, co-designed by Isaac Childress and uh, Marcel. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Marcel, I'm not going to try your last name. Uh, and uh, actually, so it picks up right where the main storyline leaves off. Uh, so you're going to complete the main storyline. The Diviner comes to town, some cataclysmic events happening. You're going to help her out. So, Awesome. And then for maybe people who don't maybe don't know about Gloomhaven, sure. uh, what's the, the short spiel about what that game is all about? Yeah, so uh, Gloomhaven is a one to four player dungeon crawler uh, experience. Uh, but instead of using traditional uh, dice mechanics and uh, luck elements, you're actually using card-driven gameplay. So uh, it's uh, kind of adding a, a big strategic jump to the classic uh, dungeon crawling experience. Awesome. So you have these available for sale at the con. Are you going to be at other, other cons or any other place that people can find out more or get the game? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this year we're lined up to do uh, Gen Con. We'll be at Essen Spiel and we'll be at PAX Unplugged for our first time. So we're really excited to be out there too. Awesome. And then if they want to find out more online, where should they go? Cephalafair.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Price. Anything else you want to say? No, just a big thank you to all of our fans. We've had so many people come out today, share tattoos, share outfits. It's been great. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's great yeah, having you. you on the interview show. Uh, this is Callie with Unfiltered Gamer. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. See you.